I wanted to bring about a different aspect of him, some of the things that we may not have heard from him on a regular meeting. I've seen him in so many forums and I have a few questions lined up for him. As a kid aspiring to be a doctor, did you always know yeah. that you needed to be in service? At what point or what event made you uh, decide to become a, a person in service? Civil service? Good morning all of you. Happy to be here and my time has already started uh, ticking. So let's get on with the question. Yeah, as a kid, uh, growing up in India, everybody would have that uh, experience of uh, uh, seeing civic issues around us and uh, things happening. Uh, I always wanted to be a doctor also, to, to just because of the fact that the, the huge ch challenge that it uh, gave uh, in itself, being a doctor in itself. But then these civic issues <coughs> that we see around ourselves, all of us have seen that, all of us have seen people uh, telling things that how frustrated they are with things and how they grip with things that's happening around them. I always felt I shouldn't be that 999th person to just grip and leave as why the things are going wrong and why <coughs> the things are not happening. So I thought it, I should step up and I should be that change agent that uh, the country needs. So if, instead of telling others to do and uh, show the way, why not myself getting onto things and taking it up myself? That is the uh, uh, the motto that I've always been living up to. That is, I am the change. So you need not tell others to change unless you change. You need to be that uh, change agent wherein you can inspire, you can get things done, you can make others, and you can provide opportunity to others. More importantly, be in a position where you can bring about that change. Uh, until then, change change will never happen. So I thought I'll get onto that and. Uh, be there and uh, again taking that decision after being a doctor was definitely a tough uh, one. Uh, uh, all through the years of my medical school uh, I really enjoyed every bit of it but then that bigger challenge was always running through my mind and uh, stepping on uh, I think uh, medicine itself was a big challenge but I wanted the, the biggest challenge that, that could uh, be of use not only to myself but to everybody else. So that was what uh, was running all over uh, uh, me and uh, an interesting anecdote that comes to my mind also. I had made this decision to jump over from medicine to, to come uh, write this exam. Always scared about the fact uh, that so many people take up the exam and the success rate and things like that. About 8 lakh people apply for the exam and uh, 5 lakh people take up, uh, 10,000 qualify the first level and then 2,000 are called uh, to the interview and 1,000 get the job and uh, the top come to the pos position that they like to. That always scared me, but then I had made the decision and started preparing. And when college was over, uh, house urgency started, uh, cleared uh, medicine. That itself was a very happy thing. People were very proud and happy going around uh, being as doctors. First day of my house urgency, <coughs> all of us were uh, thrilled as to see what would be the, the first uh, patient that we would be seeing. I had already made my decision, but then it was again uh, everything that I have learned for the past four and a half years that I was going to put it today uh, and uh, I was also thrilled, I was allotted a ward uh, to go in and see and uh, all of my friends were excited too as to what the case they are going to see first and what would be uh, the uh, things and I went in uh, to my ward, I think A4 was the ward, I walked into the ward and uh, the first complaint that comes to me was Doctor, in the ward, I have a bathroom in the ward so I realized uh, something else was meant for me. Uh, so many things we had imagined, so many things I have learned for four and a half years. And then we had a discussion in the afternoon in the canteen. People asked me as to uh, what was the first case. Uh, people said I had a, a cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh, the other guy said that uh, he assisted a labor and it was a boy child and how he was thrilled. They asked me, I said, I fixed a water problem calling the plumber. So I think uh, it was destined to be so. That's a good one. I think that kind of answers my next question also. I was going to ask, um, being a doctor in medicine, how does it help you in your profession today? So the heart blocks, you have to open, let the blood flow, or if the pipe blocks, you have to let the water flow. I see the connection, but still, how how does medicine uh, help you in your profession? Yeah, it's it learning helps, medicine. It helps big time. Uh, it helps me absorb pressure. I've seen life and death situations in those five and a half years. So definitely it helps absorb pressure and uh, Again, uh, uh, breaking down complex issue into simpler uh, protocols, that's what I've learned. You've seen critical uh, care parlance, there is something called ABC, airway breathing and circulation. 
uh, that is a sequential way you go about things. The same you can apply to all civic issues also as to sequentially go about things and uh, solving issues. So being in uh, medicine definitely helps uh, being a doctor. That's interesting. And the next question is what motivates you on a daily basis? Challenges itself are motivating enough uh, for the day. Apart from that, I, I love to learn from mistakes uh, right from uh, childhood. Uh, all of us make, make mistakes and uh, it's about how good we are uh, in learning from that and getting on with it. Uh, first time I wrote this exam, I couldn't clear. Uh, best thing was, I learned from the mistake as to where I went wrong and I had to change the subject and then clear this. Same thing goes away with everything. Uh, I have an average day, I have a good day, I have a bad day. End of the day, I sit back and assess the, uh, assess the day how it unfolded as to how it could have been and how I could have uh, realized the day better and made it much much more useful. I think that sort of uh, learning from the mistake really helps me go about uh, things on a day to day basis. That's great. Uh, I think we have spoken about you. I, I think most of us here from Coimbatore want to hear about Coimbatore as well. What is your grand vision for Smart Coimbatore? I think the grand vision, I asked this uh, to a couple of children when we were formulating the Smart City proposal. What do you think is a Smart City was the question I posed to a child. And he said uh, it should be easy and it should be fun like how I switch uh, remotes between uh, my cartoon channels. Uh, that was a, uh, a naive kid uh, telling me something. But then I understood something from that. Uh, wanted to make things easier for the citizen. That was what the kid was meaning. I think uh, that is a primary goal to make uh, deliver services to make things easier for the people wherein we could be the, the facilitators or regulators that is all fine but then the service delivery has to be easier and uh, uh, if we go to office or uh, the way we commute must be easier a stay that we have at workplace or at home should be made easier so the, along those lines we have designed it and I also want Kaimundur to be a leader to set the trend and way for the others to look upon. That is how we are going about things and we have chosen unique uh, projects like uh, I have uh, heard people are here to speak about water management and water body rejuvenation. I think that is the crux of our plans in Smart City. So that can be done across the lakes and water bodies in the city. I think the city will really show a way uh, uh, in, to others to take it up. I think Smart City is not just about uh, superstructures and big buildings and automation. I think it has to go beyond that conceptually, uh, conceptually also it will have to bring about that kind of a change and the concept that we have set in, uh, again once they take full shape, I think uh, Paimadur will really be uh, showing the way in terms of be it the water body, rejuvenation, uh, non-motorized non transport across the city, the, it really change the way we commute and really change the way uh, uh, we consume things and we uh, experience the services. I think uh, easy living, can I say, will yeah. be smart Coimbatore. I think we all agree on that. What is like one huge idea that can change Coimbatore around? I think one huge idea it says, the title here says, uh, merge it says. I think that is the huge idea, uh, seriously. See, one corporation or one uh, district administration cannot solve everybody's problems. And one person alone cannot uh, solve everybody's problem. One NGO or a corporate cannot solve everybody's problem. I think everybody has to get together and uh, work. Not by getting together, I don't mean just the money component or the financial aspects. I think the involvement, I think uh, giving in time, the best thing that we can do to somebody or something that we love is giving in the time, and giving in that involvement. I think we all love the city and we should all get together and involve ourselves for the city. So that would be one big idea, uh, every, all of us coming together and working for the city. I've created multiple platforms over the couple of years that I've been here. I think uh, all, all the more reason for all of us to join together and uh, uh, bring in the city to be an exemplary model for all of us to emulate. Kaimto has been showing uh, you know, how people partnership can uh, benefit in so many ways. I think that's right. And when you're building a city, what in your opinion is the most? Should it be green, smart or happy? <laughs> Happy, we've been hearing a lot these days, happy country, happy person, happy so what space. is more important? Yeah, I think a combination of everything, uh, city should have uh, elements of all these things. Like we've already discussed, uh, uh, an easy living city for everybody would again have all these components. So that is what we're looking to build. We could, we could have easily gone in and uh, have had a greenfield project for the city. 
bringing in all structures and superstructures. We didn't go and do that. We wanted honest opinion as to what the people really wanted and we are going to get those things done. So I think what we are having would definitely be a combination of all of that and we are definitely working towards that. But are there any parameters for happy? I think it's up to it's How do we measure happiness of the city? There are some. I don't see and uh, maybe we can frame a happiness index but I don't see uh, uh, it's up to the people uh, to feel and realize and I'm sure uh, there would be uh, all uh, changes that would come their way for uh, provide reasons for people to be happy and all the more uh, uh, enjoy enjoyful of all the uh, amenities that are going to be in the city. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for being here and your time is uh, one person who can uh, you know take an idea and convert into action I've seen that one of the TEDx ideas that We've pitched also become a reality in Coimbatore and solid waste management and a lot of things. So not just a, a person who talks ideas and changes, in action we've seen. So thank you and let's hope we have a wonderful Coimbatore in your leadership. Thank you.